Hello. <laughs> Are you alright? How do you do? My name is Ben, for those who don't know me. For those who do know me, hello, here we are again, it's me. And um yes, okay, here we go. So this is my this is this is what's happening with the hair situation, the ordeal that is my hair growth. And um it's more or less I mean it it, it looks stupid. It does look stupid, but there we go. So how is everybody? Um February. Is it alright? Um, it was alright for me, it was, you know, it's alright. Um, I think for a lot of people in the UK, we've got a bit of kind of um, like a oh come on sort of thing, which I think um, maybe is the same with everyone, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, for me it's been a bit of a kind of like a month, because I'm having to just decide what to do with my future. Um, but yes, but I've done a lot of reading, I've read five books this month, and um, I want, I'm going to talk about them, so there we go. So first of all, dystopian fiction, science fiction. We don't see a lot of that here on Doom Antidote. Um, but I I read The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Now, I was drawn to this book because um, I'm not really drawn to dystopian fiction in general, really. Um, I think a few, well, about a decade ago, I read The Road, um, which is dystopian post-apocalyptic fiction, isn't it? Um, but things like 1984, Handmaid's Tale, all that sort of stuff, um, not to mention kind of like YA dystopian fiction, it just doesn't really appeal to me. <laughs> Nose! It just doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. Um, but this did appeal to me, and why is that? Well, it's because... Um, <laughs> uh, so this was written and published in the early 90s, but it is set in the uh, mid to late 2020s. So I was kind of interested to read a dystopian novel set in the 2020s having been written in the 90s um, so that's what intrigued me to it so I was really gr uh, gripped by this book this is fabulous so from the cover this cover is a little bit of a little liar um, because from this cover you sort of think I don't know what you think but um I don't from this cover I don't really get harrowing um disturbing dystopian novel from this cover but that's what it is. It is a harrowing, um, disturbing, dystopian novel. And one of the disturbing things about it is that it is um, plausible. It does feel very plausible um, in terms of everything, because it's set in the 2020s, but um, if you just sort of shift the dates a few, uh, you know, a few decades into the future, if you said it was set in the 2050s or 2060s, um, it still feels very relevant, very plausible, and kind of very like, oh no! So the world in this book, um, there is basically widespread extreme poverty, and um, there's a lot of kind of corporate greed, and the rich have gotten very, very rich, and the poor have gotten very, very poor. And um, any kind of, if you have any sort of um, hint, or you show any kind of hint that you have any kind of wealth, you open yourself up as a target. And that includes not just individuals, but on a sort of community level as well. So uh, the main character, Lauren, uh, she lives in this kind of gated community, sort of, um, uh, a, sort of a walled uh, suburb, um, very sort of security, barbed wire and everything. For the first half of the novel, um, Lauren, she's got this very, very big presentiment that uh, this community is going to be... Um, uh, infiltrated and ransacked by, you know, by nasty people. Um, also, to top it all off, there is this new drug um, sort of doing the rounds, which uh, if you take it, it makes you want to start fires. And so there's these horrible, nasty gangs who start fires and then uh, ransack and, you know, murder and do nasty stuff to everyone. So Lauren is kind of really... Um, She's terrified that one of these sorts of gangs are going to infiltrate the community where she lives. And so she, um, in the first half of the novel, she is determined to get everyone to kind of be prepared for a, an emergency like that. So one of the things I really loved about this novel is that it's not post-apocalyptic novel. It's kind of like, it's a teetering over the edge of the apocalypse <laughs> novel, which kind of, it's, it's a very sort of recognisable world and it's a very kind of plausible world, as I said. Um, so, like, civilization still exists and society still exists, but um, it's kind of just... If you think about the road, 
I mean, The Road is a post-apocalyptic novel um, where everything's kind of civilization's completely gone. But um, if you imagine sort of the the world of The Road, but then um, about like ten years or something um, before that, so when civilization is still around and stuff, um, this kind of this novel kind of uh, is is the kind of the just the roller coaster like uh, down into um, yeah the apocalypse essentially and the collapse of society. And yes, so it's it's pretty brutal. It's very violent, and there's a few sort of very disturbing bits. I mean, Octavia Butler she doesn't kind of hold back on 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 the nastiness, particularly Lily. There's some nastiness that happens to children, and um, you know, women and kids and stuff. Um, and yeah, it, it is it is disturbing and nasty, which is why I think this cover is a bit kind of like <laughs> never mind. But yeah, it, it is. She, it's a really, it's it's really well done. I mean, I thought the um, the world building. Um, there's no sort of great big swathes of expositional stuff like this is what the world is like. You get very kind of sparse, sparse the right word. You get very sort of um, I guess sort of limited descriptions of what's happening in the world. But from those descriptions, you get a very vivid idea of what's happening about what the government are doing and and what the world is like. And it's just yeah. It's very, very well done. There is a little bit of woo-woo in this, sort of. Um, so Lauren, she she has this thing called hyper-empathy. She can physically feel um, what other people are physically feeling. Um, so be that um, pleasure or pain. So when someone she sees someone in pain, she then feels that pain herself. Also, the main the main sort of thrust of the story with Lauren is that she is developing and formulating her own theology. Um, she's basically um, come up with what what and who she thinks God is, and so she's the bulk of the novel is her sort of um, formulating a new religion essentially. And uh, particularly in the second half of the novel, she's um, she slowly but surely kind of wins people over to this new, um, I guess, philosophy, a new sort of religion. So yes, if you if you like me have if you like me have big presentiments about the future and are very kind of like ah! about everything, then this novel I mean it's it's fabulous. I would really, really recommend it, but it is because it is so plausible, um it is a bit of a stressful like this could happen. Um obviously not in the twenty twenties, but you know 2050s? I don't know. So yeah, I would thoroughly recommend it, but um, yeah. There is a second book, there's um, Parable of the Talents, which is kind of like a follow-on to this book, and I'm a bit hesitant to read that one just because um, one of the strengths of this book is just is the, the world being recognisable, um, and I'm just worried like in the in the second book, because like at near the end of this book, um, like as I say, civilization is kind of just on the way into collapse, and I'm worried that the next book will be more kind of the road territory. I mean, I know this was written before the road, but um, but yes. So, but maybe I will read it. Yeah, maybe I will. I'd like I'd like to read more of this author anyway, Octavia Butler, because it was very very good. Next! So next, uh, I read a bit of a modern classic. I read Steppenwolf by Hermann Hesse. Steppenwolf. This is quite an old, as you can see, quite an old copy with a very strange cover. Yes, so this is this was translated by Basil Crichton. And it's a fairly... This is one of the smelly books. Um, uh, translation 1929. So this book kind of lends itself to a sort of an academic -y sort of um, uh, take on it, but um, I can't really do that, so um, we're just going to do the old doom antidote way of just kind of going Bleh! and uh, hopefully that'll be enough. So a friend of mine recommended this book to me a few months ago. Um, I've read Siddhartha, um, but I, I didn't know anything about what this book was. So this book is about Steppenwolf. 
So it is about a man called Harry, and uh, he believe he's middle aged, and he believes that he is half man, half wolf. Um, like literally, he he well not literally, but he's not a werewolf, but he he believes that his personality personality is half man, half wolf, and so the uh, the half man is the kind of um, the cold intellectual likes Mozart and opera and stuff, and then the wolf obviously is the more is the beast. He's very very depressed. Um, at the beginning of the book, and he um, he has a plan to end his life um, when he's 50, but um, circumstances towards the beginning of the novel, um, he decides to end his life uh, that night. And so he makes his way home, but on the way home he, um, he pops into this bar, I think, and it's there that he meets this very beautiful young woman, and um, they get to talking and she tries to teach him how to dance and stuff, and uh, through that kind of uh, conversation, um, he agrees that he is going to kind of submit himself to this woman and kind of do whatever she tells him to do. So I did, uh, did I enjoy this book? Sort of. I, um, it's a bit of a, I suppose you could say it's a bit of a dude bro book. Um, male gaze book. Um, you know, it is the sort of the middle-aged man, you know, getting with two beautiful young women. Um, but there is a lot of things that I, that I did get from it. I mean, particularly towards the beginning, um, when he's talking about wanting to end his life and all this sort of stuff and talking about his regrets and stuff, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things in there that I was like, ooh! But yeah, the whole kind of um, middle-aged man getting with the beautiful women, I mean, that's just what it is. Um, although there is, there's a, um, there's a young man who, um, who hits on Harry a couple of times and, uh, <laughs> I was kind of like, um, he's sort of like this, what's his name, is it Pablo or something? This uh, uh, saxophonist, sax saxophonist. Um, yeah, he kind of, um, he hits on Harry a couple of times. And I was like, ooh! So towards the end, it gets very, very surreal. Um, it gets very, very surreal. And, uh, and kind of abstract and stuff. Yeah, it's got a sort of interesting kind of meaning of life type thing um, towards the end. Also, his um, theory of... Uh, of him just being half man, half wolf is kind of um, tested and um, and sort of picked apart, and he sort of realizes that no, we're not just we're not binary. We have uh, we are multifaceted, faceted. Um, so he learns that. Um, so yeah, so there was things about this book which I really got, which I really got, I got a lot from, and I was like, ooh, ooh. Other things about it, I was like, okay, take it or leave it. But I did think it was interesting. Um, and yes, I think it deserves, I think I, I'd quite like to read another translation of it. Um, because this is quite an old one, I'd, I'd quite like to read another translation of it. But, um, but yes, I've read this one, so there, there we go. Um, would I recommend it? Yes, I suppose so. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm a bit of a dude bro, and this is a bit of a dude bro-y book, which is fine, but, um, but yes. Okay, next up, I read The Mermaid of Black Conch. This is by Monique Ruffy. And, uh, right, okay, so this, this recently won the Best Novel category at the Costa Book Awards. Um, there's a few, there's a handful of categories, but this won, like, Best Novel. Um, and... Uh, the Costa Book Awards this year was judged by our very own Simon Savage of Savage, Savage Reads, um, and he gifted me this this book, so I was very grateful to him. So thank you, Simon. Um, yeah, he was one of the judges, and um, and yeah, they they picked this book as their best book of uh, twenty twenty. So this is set in the Carib Caribbean uh, in the seventies, and. Um, yeah, it's just fabulous. So it's kind of like a, an age-old tale, as old as time, um, story about a mermaid who is caught by some fishermen. Um, then she's rescued by um, this bloke who lives on Black Conch, this island. Um, he then he then he rescues her and takes him takes her back home, and uh, she then starts to turn back into a human. Um, and there, a sort of a love story starts to uh, starts to develop. Um, so in terms of the plot of this, I mean, it's kind of, it's not the most twisty-turny plot that you can imagine. I'm sweating, sorry. 
it's not the most twisted <laughs> turning plot that you can imagine. Um, but it is just executed very, very well. It's just very, very good. I really liked it. So first of all, as a mermaid, I mean, again, we're talking about um, half person, half animal here. But as a mermaid, she's quite, she's sort of like a realistic mermaid in that she's not like half woman, half fish. She's kind of like half, she's half human, half fish. So she's sort of a, a little bit gross, even though she's sort of quite sort of beguiling to the the, sa the American sailors and to the and to the bloke. Yeah, she is still quite sort of <laughs> gross. Like she's sort of got some, um, she's got webbed, she's got fins, and she's got some um, crabs coming out of her nose, and she's sort of slimy and like hello. So yeah, so and th actually, this cover is a really really good cover because this is kind of what she is. Um, but what she is. Um, this book kind of touches on a lot of different themes, a lot of different topics. Ooh. Um, and uh, one of them is this thing about, um, uh, I guess about race, but also about sort of indigenous people. So she's an indigenous woman who, um, whose um, people were kind of populated the Caribbean islands like way, 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 way back. Um, and she was cursed because she was sort of beautiful and... Um, and sort of was getting all the attention from all the men. The woman, they uh, they cursed her to be um, to be a, a mermaid and to sort of roam the seas, you know, alone. Um, and so, and then of course you have so David, who is this um, Caribbean man. He uh, he he meets her first and sort of starts to kind of um, develop her kind of relationship, I guess, with her until these white American fishermen come along and capture her. Yeah, it just touches on the different intricacies of different relationships and um, the different kind of, uh, I guess, what's the word? Dynamics between different people. So whilst it is a sort of predictable plot, there's a lot of kind of themes and, and stuff which is just, which sort of arise, which I thought that um, Monique Groffy just really does very, very well. Um, I can definitely see why this one... Um, the Costa Book Award. I, mean, I, don't, I, can't, I can't off the top of my head, I don't know what the other books were, but um, um, but I can see this doing very, very well. So the, the Woman Prize for Fiction, I think, um, the long list gets released on the 10th of March, I think, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this there. In fact, I hope it is there, because I do, I want this book to do well, because um, I did enjoy it a lot. Um, so yes, but I, I, I was sort of, I also thought that this would be a bit of a booker book, at least a book, a long list book, because um, because the way it's sort of the narrative devices that are used, I thought was just interesting. It was, it's just done in a very interesting, clever way. Um, so yes, pick it up if you if you haven't read it already, because I thoroughly recommend it. Okay, next up we have a bit of a huge brick. We have. The Tower! Yes, this is The Tower by Uwe Tellkamp. Now look at look at this book. Look at this huge this is a huge, huge, huge book. So this is one thousand pages, um a thousand and four pages to be to be specific, and um so I had never heard of this book before, um until a um a friend from social media, um he he asked whether he wants he asked whether I wanted to buddy read this with him, and I was like, "Chill, yeah, yeah, okay, let's do it." And yeah, so this is a huge, huge novel. This one, um, I think it was in two thousand eight. This one, um, this massive. I think it's just called in English. It's called the the German Book Prize. I think, um, and it's kind of like the equivalent. It's like the Booker equivalent in Germany, um, and uh, yeah, so it won that, and it's this massive novel. I mean, this is translated by Mike Mitchell. Um, now this is a huge novel and it's about, um, it's basically a family saga and it's about um, Dresden in the 80s. So it's, um, it, I think it covers from, 19, from 1982 all the way up to 1989. And um, so the subtitle is The Tower, uh, Tales from a Lost Country. So this is uh, a family that are living in East Germany uh, under the, under sort of communism. And uh, of course, it follows the collapse of communism in East Germany, and um, and yes, and all of that. 
all that stuff. Now, my knowledge of this period of history and this and, and Germany in the 80s and all that sort of stuff is extremely limited. I don't know, I hardly know anything. Um, I know roughly about the Berlin Wall and stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't really know much about the, um, the context or the history of this. But the friend who I buddy read this with, uh, he did, he does know the, um, the history and stuff, which was very, very helpful as he was able to sort of um, explain a lot of the kind of the cultural references and and yeah, just explain what, what was happening because the book doesn't kind of explain um, stuff. It's more kind of on the ground what's happening. Um, so there's a massive, massive cast of characters. Very, very helpfully, there's a, um, there's a, a sort of a character list at the back of the book, um, which I was sort of like kept sort of going back to. Um, so a massive cast of characters, but it focuses in on this family, um, specifically on three characters. So you have Robert, who is a doctor. You have Christian, who is his son, who wants to be a doctor himself, but um, gets enlisted into the army. And then you have Mino, who is Robert's brother-in-law, and he is an editor. And um, it being East Germany, Dresden um, in the 80s, um, surveillance and um, kind of informing on people and uh, the kind of the paranoia of all that is um, is is very very high. Also uh, Mino being an editor he has to edit novels and he has to make sure that novels don't kind of sort of stay in line, that novelists stay in line with with stuff that they don't criticise the government or anything like that. There's this really kind of hellish place where you have to get all your paperwork and it's all red tape and and stuff and you can't leave the country without permission and, and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, so the novel is basically a very very um, detailed, 1000 pages, um, look into into life on the ground in that and how the um, and how all these things kind of affect this very kind of middle class family who you can sort of you can tell that they were sort of fairly sort of well off or fairly kind of like comfortable but um, are kind of more and more getting more and more worse off by uh, by what's happening, um, particularly with Christian, who uh, at the beginning of the novel is quite this sort of he's got an acne problem and he wants to be, you know, he wants to be a doctor and he wants to go to university, but then he's enlisted into the army and and his experiences in the army are sort of really hellish and and you know if you sort of think bad things happen in there, um, and then one of the characters I won't say who but one of the characters um, is leading a double life has he has. He's basically he's he's having an affair, but um, this affair involves a second family, and so because of this second family, um, the government um, or whoever whoever it is, they um, they sort of use that against him. They use it as kind of like blackmail, I guess, um, for him to be an informer on his friends. So yeah, so it is. It's an interesting. It's a very <laughs> interesting novel. It's very detailed, as you can imagine. Um, and it being a thousand pages, I mean, some of the some of the chapters, I was like, okay, fair enough. Um, so it's not all kind of like plot, plot, plot. It's um, it's very kind of uh, you get a very sort of detailed like lo detailed look into what's happening. So the family, um, or Mino's uh, family, I guess, um, he lives in this house which is sort of continually being um, sectioned off. Uh, for other people, for other occupants. Um, so yeah, the, the space that they inhabit is sort of slowly getting more and more boxed in, and they're having to share, you know, bathrooms with more and more people. Yes, I mean, I, I believe the author, he lived through this stuff, and you do get a very, very vivid picture of what it was like, and as the novel kind of progresses and it gets more and more worse, more and more worse, worser and worser, <laughs> um, yeah, it does get a lot very, very stressful. You can just imagine, you can only sort of imagine what that must have been like. Um, obviously, it ends in at 1989, so. And the style of it, I mean, it's interesting. Some of the some of the chapters um sort of feel very kind of realistic. Some of them are obviously it's a much more of a satire. Um and and yeah, some some of it is sort of, I guess, showing you the ridiculousness of it, as well as kind of the hellishness of it. Um, around kind of like the eight hundred page mark, I was kind of done. I was sort of like, 
okay I've sort of I'm, I'm ready for this to finish now um as you, oh, as you can imagine uh that there's I mean a lot of plot happens in the last 200 pages so you, that was fine so yeah, so I did think it was fascinating. I was very, very grateful that I was reading this, well, I was buddy reading this with someone who did know the history and, and could, you know, I could kind of say, what, what, what's going on? Um, because he was able to say, this is what's going on. So I was very, very grateful for that. Um, yeah, it's a fascinating one. I mean, it's, it's a commitment. Um, I guess if you're interested in the history of, of this era, um, then it's a very, very good, um, yeah, it is very, very good. Um, I did, I mean, as I said, I, I, I kind of got, I was sort of over it by um, by sort of like the 800 page mark. Um, but, um, but yes, no, I'm, I'm glad I read it. Now, I don't personally vet my authors. Um, I know some people like to research their authors before they read books in case, you know, for whatever reason. Um, if you're on the fence with that and you quite fancy pick up this book, it might be worth researching the author because he's kind of done some dickish things <laughs> well well he's he's got some views about stuff which is which aren't kind of the best views in the world um so yeah, it might be worth sort of researching the author before you want to invest in this book but um but otherwise i think it's a very very good look at this period in history and um there's moments in it which are very stressful there's moments that sort of like nail biting bits in it um, a lot of it is kind of just the day-to-day -day workings of what's going on and and a thousand pages of that um, I got a bit sort of like nah. but uh, yes I'm glad I read it so if you fancy it then yes then do read it <laughs> so last of all I read this book which is amazing uh, I read White Teeth by Zadie Smith um, yes, white teeth, more like beige teeth, am I right? I'm allowed to have nasty teeth, I'm British, so there we go. Now I've read On Beauty by Zadie Smith, and uh, yeah, I was very sort of interested in, in this one, White Teeth by Zadie Smith. Um, this is her debut novel, of course, so I kind of want to rant and rave about this book. Um, not rant and rave, I want to rave and rave, <laughs> rave about this book because I really, really loved it. I mean, this is a debut novel, and she was 24 when she um, when it was published. Um, which I think is, I'm taking it as inspiration. Inspiration, Ben, it's inspiration. Um, yes, yeah, so this is, what is this about? This is about um, the past catching up with you, and um, about different generations and different cultures clashing and, and stuff, and about London. Um, so uh, yes, it's a kind of like a family saga. Um, and it kind of covers a lot of ground. This is such a, it's a thing, because this is the debut novel, and it's kind of just, it's very, there's an audacity to the, um, to this novel, which I really love, because it really pays off. Um, so yeah, what, what is it about, Ben? Come on. It essentially revolves around two families. Um, the fathers, the kind of the, yeah, the fathers of which, they fought in the Second World War, um, and sort of a, there was an incident in that war which they kind of want to sort of forget about. Um, but yeah, they start these families, uh, and as the children of these families sort of grow up, um, more and more sort of cultural um, differences are kind of brought to the surface, and also kind of the past um, comes back to haunt the people. Um, as well as that, there is another, a third family, who are the most excruciating white middle class family you've ever read, um, called the Chalfrons or the Chalfons, um, who both of the kids of the other two families sort of get involved with, and uh, yes, and kind of drama and ridiculousness ensues. So yes, yeah, so there's just so much about this novel that I want to talk about. It's just it's just fabulous. I mean, first of all, the writing of it is is um, is pretty amazing. I mean, it's kind of as I say, there's a kind of audacity audacity about the book. Um, like every single sentence, it seems, Zadie Smith, she really kind of she sort of fits in as many kind of jokes, not jokes, but um, it's really funny this book. Um, and in every sort of sentence, there seems to be kind of like a 
either a joke or kind of a um, a literary reference or a philosophical reference. I uh, I watched the book chemist's review of this, and he um, mentioned something hysterical fiction, which um, which I was like, oh yeah, yes, hysterical fiction, um, because I I found that as well with On Beauty, where it sort of reaches this this uh, particularly sort of towards the the end the denouement it sort of reaches this sort of really ridiculous heights of hysteria um everyone kind of shouting and everything and uh, it's similar with this book i mean there's some really kind of like ridiculously high stakes stuff particularly towards the end the end the last act of this book i was like this is getting a bit weird not weird but just very sort of um yeah ridiculous and kind of like all right um, but yes, but Zadie Smith, she's just really good at writing ridiculously kind of blow your top, um, I guess, arguments or situations. She's just very good at pacing those sorts of things. Um, and yeah, the kind of the last act of this book, it, it's pretty kind of like bonkers, but not bonkers. I don't mean that. I mean, just, just high stakes and kind of just like... But um, it all comes together at the end, and everything kind of uh, you sort of realise what's going on and stuff. I'm just, I just really loved it. I was just like, wow, this is like really fabulous. Um, if you're a writer and you want some inspiration, then I would very much recommend you reading this book because it's just it shows what you can, what you can, well, what someone can do. Um, you know, if you if you know your stuff and you know kind of how to. So, I mean, it's just like, because it's not a short novel either, it's 550 pages, this edition. Um, but it just, there's just so much, it's it's dense without feeling dirgy. It's, um, yeah, I read it really quickly, I read it like in like three days or something. So, uh, yeah, I really loved it. This is going to be one of my favourites, I think, of, of the year. Um, so, yes. White teeth, beige teeth, am I right? Thoroughly recommend did it so let's have a look shall we uh this is what i read in february uh there we go Ooh. so i usually i'm usually a six book a month person but this is five books and i think you know that kind of tells you why um so yeah so i'm pleased with that so is there going to be a march wrap-up well i don't know is the answer to that so next month I want to read Middle March, um, but I do want to take my time with it. I don't want to kind of um, stuff in a load of books. I've been feeling recently that the kind of the temptation to read for the channel, um, as opposed to um, having the channel for the reading, um, I've sort of been. I've I've been having feelings that that's sort of been happening a little bit, so I kind of want to chill out a bit and just um, you know, just sort of read Middle March without sort of thinking about oh I've got to fit in a load of books for the March wrap up. So uh, so yeah, so I don't know whether there's going to be a March wrap up. Um, that's not to say that there won't be any videos next month. I might sort of sneak in a a tag or two. Um, but yes, but don't expect you know a sort of seven, eight, nine book wrap up extraordinaire so i hope everyone is all right um and uh yes it's been a it's a glorious day today it's a glorious kind of global warming parable of the sower spring day today <laughs> um but yes yes hope you are all all right um i hope i'm all right and i shall see you when i see you and bye bye